Hello and welcome back to Matty's Tottenham blog and to another transfer special as we're joined by the one and only, the legend, the transfer expert Fabrizio Romano to discuss all things Tottenham. Fabrizio, thanks again for joining us today. How are you? Thank you. Thank you, my friend. Big pleasure. I'm fine. Thank you. Everything okay and ready to start. Good, good to hear. I'm sure you're, you're enjoying this hectic transfer window that we're already seeing, as well as the, the incredible Euros win for, for Italy last week. But look, let's dive straight into things because uh, there's so much to talk about with Tottenham at the moment. Uh, and what I'd like to start on is Takahiro Tamiyasu, because it's a deal that Tottenham fans have been expecting to hear a completion of uh, in recent weeks. But um, some people are saying it's very close to being done. The last you said it, was, it wasn't a done deal. Is there any update you can give us on that one? Oh, it wasn't a done deal some days ago. Uh, for sure, there are negotiations, and this is 100% confirmed. As I say many times, there is a bid from Tottenham around 18 million euro add ons included. Bologna wants around 20 or 25 million euro, so there is still a gap between the two clubs. They're talking. Tomiyasu wants to join Tottenham. It's the only option for him because at the moment Arsenal are not in the race. The only option in Premier League, I mean, because there is also Atalanta here in Italy who want Tomiyasu, but his priority is now Tottenham. Let's see, it's about the two clubs. They are talking and let's see if they can find an agreement for Tomiyasu in the next days. They are working on it. The player is hoping to join Tottenham as he wants Premier League football, but he's not done yet. So we need to wait some days to see what happens also with the player. Atalanta made the bid. It was three, or three weeks ago, but at the moment they have still no agreement with Bologna because the priority for, two player, for the player is joining Tottenham. So I think in the next days we will have the situation clear and also Tomiyasu is waiting to understand what happens because his dream is joining Premier League, is joining Tottenham. Well, that's certainly good to hear that uh, Tottenham is the club that he wants, but there, there's certainly one centre-back who, as we're hearing, doesn't want Tottenham, and that is Jules Kunde. And there were reports last week suggesting that Tottenham had gone as far as agreeing a deal with Sevilla, some saying that maybe maybe that wasn't true. Where, where do we currently stand on the, the future of Kunde? Yeah, the situation of Kunde is, is a bit particular because um, Tottenham are working on a deal with Sevilla since weeks, since Paratici arrived, because he's focusing on centre-backs and he started to talk with Sevilla and also talking directly with the player and his agents. The relationship with the, with the agents is so good, but at the moment the player prefers to wait for something different as he wants to play Champions League football. So that's why at the moment Kunde is hoping for something different. Then we will see. At the moment, as I always say in the last days, it's complicated. There is no big optimism just because the player is focused on something maybe different, as I said, about Champions League football as kind of immediate situation on, on European football. But we will see. Uh, in, in the transfer market, Paratici is used to talk with five or six players for the same position. So get ready for this kind of situation, talking with agents, talking with players, talking with clubs in five different deals and then deciding what's the best one for his club. And so it will be like this also in this kind of situation for, for the centre-back. For sure, they are working with Sevilla and Sevilla are ready to sell the player if they have the right bit. And also for less than the 80 million euro release clause, so they're playing absolutely less than this. But at the moment, the player is a problem, so there is still no agreement. Yeah, and it's very interesting that the way Paratici goes about business. It's something we haven't seen in the Premier League that, that I can remember. And I'll definitely ask you something about that a little bit later. But there, there are other centre backs that the Tottenham are, are looking at, and there's a few reports that we're interested in Rafael Varane, which I think is a report a few a few Tottenham fans have kind of uh, looked past because we don't think the player uh, would would make that move. But I suppose what I would like to know is: is there a chance of Real Madrid moving in for Jules Kunde if if Varane does complete his his move to Manchester United? Uh, chances, I would say yes, because maybe they will consider to sign a new centre-back, but at the moment there is nothing. So if I had to comment chances, potentially, why not? But at the moment there is nothing going on with Sevilla or with the player. So Real Madrid are not acting like they want to sign a new centre-back immediately. Maybe if they have an opportunity, they can consider this kind of opportunity. But at the moment it's not like a negotiation between Sevilla and Real Madrid or between the agents of the player and Real Madrid. It's still so quiet and Real Madrid style in the last years has always been in not signing any new player. They had the opportunity with David Alaba who could play in as left back, as centre back, as midfielder. So he was perfect for what they're looking for. But at the moment for Varane, the replacement if he leaves Real Madrid because it's not done yet. But the replacement has not been decided yet. And I'm not sure it will be Kunde also because the price will be so high. And so mm. it won't be so easy. Yeah, well, look, even if Spurs don't get Kunde, there, there are plenty of other options uh, that are out there. And two names that have been mentioned are uh, Maxence Lacroix of Wolfsburg and uh, Milan Skriniar of Inter Milan. Now, the, the general noise uh, around those recently is that they, they could be staying. I know I saw the, one of the high members of the board in Wolfsburg today apparently said that Lacroix uh, is expected to be at the club. Is there any update on, on our pursuit of those two players? 
As you said, I think it will be so so diff difficult to sign these players. Lacroix is one of the players they are scouting and following since also before Paratic arrived. But at the moment, it's not advanced because Wolfsburg, Wolfsburg hope to keep the player. But the Tottenham are informed on this player because, as I said, Paratic is used to talk with different ones. So uh, he's one of these players, a uh, centre-back. About Skriniar, I'm told it is really, really difficult. Uh, Paratic always loved the player since he was in a another club here in Italy, Sampdoria, before joining Inter. And Paratic has always been looking at this player. Tottenham, as you know, also last summer wanted him and was trying to sign him. So he's always been in the radar, but I'm told that it will be really, really difficult also because Inter are not accepting 40 or 45 million euros. Mm -hmm. They were negotiating around 50 million euros as price tag last summer, but now Skriniar has a different value also because his season with Inter with Antonio Conte was fantastic. So that's why they are not negotiating for 40 or 45 million euros. So I think it will be really, really difficult. Yeah, I, I certainly think the boat has sailed on that one for Spurs. I thought we had a, a very good opportunity last summer with Steve Hitchin going out to Milan trying to get that done. But of course, as you mentioned, Skriniar being reinstated in that Inter team that, of course, won the league. Um, I think that's a, a far-fetched dream for, for Spurs fans at the moment. Um, but moving away from centre-backs, there's a, a goalkeeper that we're looking at. It's Pierluigi Gallini. And uh, talks from Calcio Atalanta saying we've uh, agreed personal terms and other reports saying that there are uh, negotiations ongoing between Spurs and Atalanta. Is, is there anything you can tell us on that one? Yes, that is true. It's true that Golini is one of the players that Tottenham are following closely. Also, other clubs are interested. Uh, many clubs from Spain, from Italy have been asking for this goalkeeper because... He's been one of the best goalkeepers in Serie A for many years, has been also in the national team. Then he had some problems with, with the manager, Gasperini, and that's why Atalanta decided to go for, for Musso, for another goalkeeper from Udinese. Now, Golini is one of the biggest opportunities on the market, and Fabio Paratic is always keen on the big opportunities. As I said, it's not only Tottenham, but for sure Tottenham are in the race. They had contact with the player. He was already playing in the Premier League because he, he started his career at Manchester United Academy, and then he was moving to Aston Villa in Championship. So he's always been uh, close to English football and he would love to be back at top level in English football. So let's see if Tottenham can find an agreement with Atalanta, if any other club will jump in the deal. But I can confirm that he is one of the potential options for Tottenham this summer. And I, in my opinion, it would be really interesting because uh, I, remember, I remember one one year ago or two years ago, Inter, Roma, many clubs, also AC Milan, wanted to sign Golini and Atalanta were asking for 30 or 35 million euros. Uh, now is a big opportunity because they signed another goalkeeper and so... Golini is on the market and would be really, really interesting for, for Tottenham to, to, kind of, to sign this kind of player. Yeah, look, hopefully it's one we get we, we get done because Hugo Lloris perhaps coming towards uh, the end of his, his time at the top of the game, a bit of competition for him and maybe a, a potential long-term replacement there could be a, a good thing for us. But uh, a few midfielders that have been mentioned, Hussam Auer, uh, one of the main names uh, for Spurs. Some reports saying that Arsenal have had a bid rejected. Um, others saying that Tottenham have an interest but have not uh, yet made a bid. Uh, is our interest in the player true? I would say that Fabio Paratici wanted him at Juventus last summer. He was close to join Juventus. Uh, they were thinking about spending money or a war for a war or for Federico Chiesa, and they decided to go for Federico Chiesa because always, also Andrea Pirlo wanted Federico Chiesa to join Juventus. And so Paratici always appreciated a war, but at the moment I'm told there is still nothing advanced on this side. So for sure Paratici has a good relationship with his agents. They are the same agent of Weston McKenny midfielder who signed for Juventus. So he's in good relationship with his agency. He knows the player, he appreciates the player, but at the moment he's not advanced. I think a war has chances to leave Leon this summer if the right bid will arrive. That's by last summer when he had some opportunities, but he decided to stay because he wanted Champions League football. This is my only question mark about the Champions League football because last summer he said no to he was not convinced it was not a no but he was not convinced about arsenal opportunity because he wanted champions league football maybe this summer he will change his mind we will see but at the moment he's not advanced yet with tottenham paratish appreciates him yes but he's not advanced yet yeah i think it's going to be a huge stumbling block for us and uh, not even in the europa league of course in the, in the conference league i think that could deter uh, a lot of players from from trying to get a deal done is there any potential for tongue and to go the, the opposite way if a deal progresses there sorry i didn't understand the question sorry uh, oh, is, is there any is there any chance of Tongi and Dambele going to Lyon? I know there's a few no, reports. No, I'm that. told no. I'm told no. The player is not considering to be included in any swap deal and not coming back to Lyon. So I also heard this rumor. But also last summer, Tottenham were planning for something like this for Dombele, not with Lyon, but with Inter. And the player was not so convinced about leaving the club and being part of a swap deal. So I don't see this deal as easy. Uh, maybe Dombele could leave the club if the right bid will arrive, but not in this swap deal with Owar. 
Perfect. I think that'll uh, be uh, nice to hear for a lot of Spurs fans because we were a bit concerned about those uh, those reports initially. Um, I want to ask you now about a few uh, Serie A players that Tottenham are being linked to. And we, you know, we were kind of expecting this with the, the incoming of, of Paratici and, uh, of course, the links that he would have within the Serie A. Uh, the first one is Lorenzo Insigne, which is one that I think Tottenham fans would expect to be out of our price range and out of the, the kind of calibre of player that we can attract as well. Is, is there any interest in Insigne or any real uh, maybe negotiations or something? No, at the moment, no. From what I'm told, there is nothing with Tottenham. Uh, of course, I understand the rumours because, you know, when there is a player like Lorenzo Insigne out of contract in one year with Tottenham, of course, it's a big opportunity. So many clubs will be interested. And let's see if Napoli will decide to extend this contract or if Insigne will say, I want to change, I want to try something different. So at the moment, the Insigne situation in general is really open and everything could happen on this side. But what I'm told is that with Tottenham at the moment, there is still nothing going on. Napoli have not received anything and also agent of Isigna has not received anything from Tottenham. Of course, Paratici knows the player. He's Italian. He's one of the best players here in Serie A since many years. But at the moment, there is nothing serious, I would say, between Tottenham and Insignia. Then we'll see because it's an opportunity, but at the moment, there is nothing. Yeah, I think Insigne is one of those players after the fantastic euros that he had. As much as his price tag would have been high already, it'll probably be be increased even more after that. And yeah. I suppose another player that would that would fit into that bracket is, is Mikael Damsgaard from from Denmark, of course, playing with Sampdoria at the moment. Uh, I know a, a lot of teams will be looking at him following his performance uh, throughout the competition. Is there any talk of, of Spurs being in for that? No, at the moment, no. But they've been scouting him since um, two or three years. I'm told that Spurs have always been scouting this player, always been appreciating this player. Also, this year, when he was at Sampdoria, he was not always a starter. He had the fantastic Euros, but with Sampdoria, he was not always a starter. Sometimes, yes. Sometimes, he was on the bench. And during this season, Tottenham have been scouting the player also here in Italy because they were convinced that he has something special. Then, at the moment, there is still nothing going on like negotiation or personal terms or something like this. Well, let's see, because in my opinion, he could be the typical opportunity on the market maybe in August if someone was going to, will be spending like 35 million euro, 40 million euro, maybe it could be a big chance. So we will see. They've been scouting him, but at the moment, nothing going on. Um, another link that uh, kind of crept up initially when Spurs were expected to appoint Paolo Fonseca uh, was one of the many Roman players we were linked to, and that was Lorenzo uh, Pellegrini. I, I think Spurs fans think with Jose Mourinho in charge there now, it could be very difficult to uh, to get any deal to materialise. But is, is Tottenham's interest in Pellegrini real? No, it's not about Mourinho. I think it's just about Roma. They want to keep Pellegrini. He's the captain. He's one of the most important players they have. So I don't see Roma selling Pellegrini this summer. He has released close around 30 million euro, but Roma negotiating with Pellegrini to extend this contract. So it's true that Tottenham have been following the situation of the player for many years, but it's not something advanced at the moment also because... I, I'm told that at the moment, advanced negotiations are not for strikers or midfielders at Tottenham, are just for centre-back. And let's see what happens with the right-back situation. But for a midfielder and striker, I think we have to wait a bit to see what happens. And also this kind of situation like Pellegrini, Insigne, they could be opportunities. And Paratici knows so well how to work with the opportunities. But at the moment, it's not something like imminent or advanced yet. I, I would assume Joaquin Correa potentially falls into, into that same category as well. I would go, we would go with the same, yes. He's, mm. In his case, it's a bit different because the player asked to leave the club. So he wants to leave Lazio, mm. he wants to try something different. But the central men have been asking for Correa some weeks ago in a potential swap deal with Sarabia. But imagine that Lazio were asking around 45 million euros. And that's why Paris Saint-Germain say that these conditions were not signing the player. Maybe if the situation changed, yes, but at the moment, no. And so I'm curious to see what Tottenham will decide because Paratici was talking for his player at Juventus. But as I say, for Tottenham, now the priority is centre-back, is maybe to fix the situation with right-back in the next weeks if something will happen, but not for strikers at the moment. Perfect. That was, my, my next question was going to be about Danny Ings, which I suppose uh, would be the, the, the same answer there, so I, I won't waste your yes, time on that so one. Eh? He's so appreciated. Yeah. He's one of the players in the list. They like the player. They are convinced they could play with Harry Kane or also as potential backup option for, for Harry Kane mm -hmm. or for any other striker, but at the moment, as I said, it's not something happening in some days. Maybe in August, if they will fix the situation with centre-backs, they will sign some centre-backs, then yes, but at the moment, no. Perfect. And before we move on to, to Harry Kane, which is, the, of course, the most important thing, um, what I wanted to ask you was Spurs fans at the moment are, are quite concerned that our, our transfer windows go in the same way that every transfer window seems to go, in that we're you know, in advance talks with a lot of players, we're close to agreeing deals with a lot, but the deals seem to be dragged out and all that. Is that something that, that is typically associated with Paratici, given how he may negotiate for five, six, seven players at the same time? So does it usually take him a long time to, to get deals completed? 
It depends. Sometimes it takes a long time and sometimes you're signing a player like in 24 hours and you didn't hear the name. Wow. And it's, this is Paratici style. I still remember last summer he signed McKenny from Schalke for Juventus in, in 24 hours and no one reported his name till it was almost done. So sometimes he, he's working on five or six different players because also for the media. So sometimes he's, he's priding the names in the, in the media. Just to just to work secretly on another target. Sometimes he's working for this for different strategies. So he's really particular. But yes, some negotiation will take time. Some negotiation will be maybe top secret, and then you will discover it just at the at the end of negotiation. This is Paratici's style. We know him here in Italy because he's he's been one of the key men at, at Juventus to win nine times the Serie A in a row. So it was incredible what he did with Juventus. But it's also thanks to this kind of style. So sometimes to keep it secret, sometimes to go with public names, five or six, and then moving only for one, of course. This is Paratici. Uh, you will see that will be funny, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be exciting. That's something to keep us on our toes uh, for the rest of the window. But look, it, it has to be mentioned. Uh, Harry Kane, what, what's the latest on his future? Yes, at the moment there is no big update because this week the player was on holiday in the last seven days and also his agency who is working for him at the moment had no contact, no direct contact yet with Tottenham. They are taking their time, they are waiting to come back from holidays and then they will talk with Fabio Paratici, with Daniel Libby, with Nuno to decide about the future. What I can say is that 100% Tottenham are fighting to keep the player. They are convinced they can do it and they will continue on this point talking with Harry and telling him they want him at the centre of Tottenham project. So they are not looking to sell him in some days. Then we will see what Harry will say to Tottenham board. I'm really curious to see what's going to happen because Manchester City are waiting. They are basically waiting to see what happens between Kane and Tottenham to maybe try again after the £100 million uh, bid made to Tottenham and Daniel Levy refused it because he wants absolutely more than this in not accepting £100 million. So we will see. Once the player will be back from, from holidays, the situation will, will be clear, I'm sure. Yeah, and I know even, even Thomas Tuchel was talking today about uh, Chelsea's interest in Harry Kane. So there's, uh, I think, definitely some some new storylines to, to come out of the transfer window on this one. Um, the future of Hugo Lloris, of course, the, the captain of Spurs. Is there any chance of him leaving the club this summer, do you think, with the, the maybe the potential incoming of Gallini? And like I mentioned earlier, you know, his contract shortening, of course, and coming to maybe the end of his time at the top of the game. You mentioned the Miral. Sorry, I, I missed the name. Is it? Uh, Hugo Lloris, maybe his, his future. Ah, Hugo Lloris, yeah. Well, um, um, yes, uh, but we have to see on, on this side what's going to happen just because I think it's not related to Golini because Golini could be an opportunity also for the future. So I think I don't see Hugo Lloris leaving now. Maybe next summer with his contract expiring, maybe the situation could be different. But at the moment, I, I don't see Tottenham signing Golini just because they want to replace Lloris. Maybe Golini could be an opportunity for the present, but also for the future. Perfect, and I, I suppose I suppose I should ask you about Mary Demerel. Maybe it's it's a target I forgot to mention. <laughs> no, 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 but... no. At the moment, no. <laughs> Perfect. Um, I suppose one of the final players I to look at is Toby Alderweireld. Um, of course, a lot of rumors earlier in the summer that he he's asked to leave Spurs and Royal Antwerp, uh, his hometown club, potentially interested there. Has there been any update on that, or is it simply something that that could be uh, happening later in the summer? I see it later. I see it later, like in August, because it could be an opportunity, but Tottenham now want to sign new centre-backs. They are not selling any centre-back now just because they want some new one and then working on selling some players. So at the moment, it's not advanced yet on this side, but it's one of the possibilities to keep an eye on in the next weeks for sure. Brilliant. And before we end up, is there any deals that I've missed or any potential incomings or outgoings that, that we haven't yet mentioned that could be kept an eye on? <laughs> No, at the moment, no. As I said, it's more on the centre-backs more than, mm. than any, other, any other things. And also, Paratis uh, use it to work like this, step-by-step, roll-by-roll. So now, at the moment, centre-backs and right-back are the priority for Tottenham. And then we will see what's going to happen as opportunities maybe in the next weeks, for sure. Look, it's going to be, uh, like I said, the typical Tottenham window, and it'll be late on uh, maybe <laughs> the last couple of weeks before we uh, start to get deals done. But Fabrizio, thank you so much. Uh, for, for coming on to join us again today. To everyone who is watching, uh, as always, make sure to put your thanks to Fabrizio in the comments. Uh, do subscribe to the channel as well if you are new, as we are uh, closing in very quickly on 10,000 subscribers. And if you do want to be in with a chance to win a signed Spurs jersey, uh, there's a link at the top of the description that will tell you everything you need to know about that. Also supporting a good cause in the Limerick Mental Health Association. But Fabrizio, again, thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Big pleasure as always. Thank you. See you soon. Thank you, everyone uh, else. Uh, thank you so much for watching.